The CDH community is seen as one of the most degenerate groups of Magic players out there, and some of it is well deserved, but I know a lot of CDH players that are actually just good, well-mannered people in general, and I think the vocal minority are really doing their job well in ruining the perception of the format. And I wanted to talk about that from a tweet recently from Saffron Olive, bringing about a whole lot of drama around the idea of accessibility and playability and just general proxies in the format. And this comes to head with this announcement, this article from Magic Online, which Justin here uh, kind of retweeted saying that this is very good for the future of Magic Online, where commander leagues are now on the platform. Leagues for all types of commander players are coming onto the menu and two leagues for constructed and one for limited. Now, competitive commander, a four player pod with winner takes all prizing. So that's right. That's pretty much just CEDH, competitive commander, CEDH, friendly commander, a four player pod with prizes awarded by votes now that's a whole other discussion i don't know how that's going to go about the long term i think a, there's a lot of bad actors in edh i've come across a lot of just not great people to play with in general and i think a lot of people have had those stories as well generally speaking there have been more good than bad but i'm hoping at least online behind a screen that there aren't too many bad actors in these friendly pods and then there's a commander masters phantom drop but what i want to talk about is that competitive all in just winning everything type of take. This is bringing CDH to really the forefront because EDH has been on the Magic Online sphere for a while now, but now that they're getting a constructed format where they can win prizes and you could be winning a lot of Magic Online resources, whether that be ticks, play points, cards, whatever it might be. Now that it's all here, it's definitely going to shine a light on the darker recesses of this format. And this really comes to a head with Pleasant Kenobi tweeting, congratulations to a Magic Online user, Valiant Toast, for being the first person to ever get a trophy on a Magic Online CDH League, going undefeated for three rounds. Now, this is a bit of small internet history right here to take advantage of, which is why I saved it. But brings up a very good point of now that people have this, they have a leaderboard to strive for and a season to go through. There's going to be a lot of seed each players going about winning this winning in these leagues. And if this data gets presented because we see in modern in legacy and other constructed formats that all data is being presented from leagues, prelims and challenges. It's going to come to head that now that's going to happen for CDH. Now we have a digital platform where hundreds of potentially thousands of games are going to be played within a week, a month, whatever it might be. And that data is going to get curated into a metagame list and we could get that reported and Goldfish might start posting this or other websites. And then we're going to have a real metagame tier list for CEDH. And I think that is where the problem lies. And I think once the format gets quote unquote, even more solved for the casual player base, we're gonna have a lot more players coming in. And this is where the problems of sets tweet really comes to a head. CEDH without proxies can't really work, can it? And here's my take off the wrap. Let me just be 110% honest with you. I do not think CEDH can work without proxies. And that is for the primary reason of online and digital play is all fine and good. And as a content creator that has very limited time to go in person, although they do to FNM and everything, you need to be able to play in paper. The gathering aspect of magic must flourish. And that is what EDH is about. And even when it comes to competitive EDH, where a lot of folks just want to have the idea of winning at all costs, but in a four player politicking pod, it's important to have the gathering and magic online still doesn't have the most accessible ui it's not magic arena it doesn't look pretty now with that in mind a lot more people are going to be playing the format and they want to transport over into paper and that is what my argument is that it's very hard to transfer a lot of these decks now i don't want y'all hitting me with the bean soup argument and this is uh something that came from tiktok that i i really live by because there's too many people on the internet that talk about the niches something will get said by a creator something like this cdh can't work with proxies and then people will come in and say well uh, if, if you know that this one deck is actually really budget and it could be built for a thousand dollars like that doesn't matter to me because you're talking about an outlier in a sea of things that prove things right yes that is accessible but you're talking about cedh a format where people don't want to just play the mono white deck 
that is competitively viable for X amount of money. It's just like building budget lists, right? When it comes to playing competitive formats like Modern, like Legacy, decks can cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to play. And that can be very prohibitive for people that want to play certain strategies. So it's not accessible to, at all for the decks that people want to play. There might be entryways, people don't really want to play that. And that's why I think CDH is important to say, it's important for CDH to succeed with proxies. Some of the retweets I think really helped develop this story. So Golgari guy says, I don't understand why people are dunking on Seth here. This is true and by and large, it's also true for Vintage and Legacy. These formats are expensive to play without proxies and that doing so would severely limit the available player base. And I think this is, full stop, this is correct. How many folks do you know play Legacy at your local LGS? And I challenge those that don't live, especially in a big city. Me as a Toronto resident have a large, very budding legacy community. And I love those people. They're great people. I met a bunch of them. There may be bad players, but by and large, I met a lot of great people. There's a big scene here because it is a big city for a lot of, a lot of you small town folks, uh, outskirts of the city, whatever it might be. How many legacy players do you actually have by you? Let alone vintage players. I know I don't know no vintage players. I don't know any stores here in Toronto that run regular vintage events that fire. They could run uh, events every so often, bigger events that might attract people from far. But how many regular weekly vintage events do you have that fire? Technically modern and legacy. Don't don't hit me with that in the comments, okay? You know what I mean. It's important for proxies to exist for these formats. And Legacy so far still has accessible routes where I was kind of providing before that there are budget decks like Legacy Burn that you can use as an entryway into the format. And there are decks that almost have one for one ports if you spend a couple hundred more dollars in the sense of modern Death Shadow can be ported or modern Scam can be ported and Demir Control can be ported into a Legacy list and shocking yourself one or two times like, that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things for FNM play. If you're going to tournaments, you want to win a lot of money, that's fine. But playing with Shocklands over duels won't give you that much of an advantage for going to play a three round FNM, four round FNM once a week, you know, once every two weeks. That you are already able to port your modern deck almost into Legacy. But without proxies, Vintage and some of the legacy decks out there are extremely inaccessible. Look at the legacy metagame here. I mean, just looking at table type prices, Beanstalk Control is like 5k. Grixis Tempo is 5k plus. Like, yes, I, mean, I look at lands. Hey, yo, I lands is like 10k. I ain't even know. It's like 9, 10k almost. I ain't even see that. Holy. And yes, okay, look, burn. Budget. I get it. You got Saffron all about here talking about burn, but hey, yo, <laughs> yo, lands players are crazy. And I, I mean, with Mana Traders rental uh, services, like if you go to uh, Magic Online Ticks, relatively affordable when you come to rental services relatively 400 tickets 500 tickets closer to 600 tickets for some decks if you go to mana trader services here 64 bucks a month with their gold services uh you get 850 ticks worth of rental um for your decks and i think rental services are probably the only reason why legacy and vintage are still a format i'm being completely honest with you without mana traders or card hoarder as a rental service legacy and vintage will legitimately die i will fight anyone on that the, the rental services are legitimately keeping those formats alive wizards of the coast does not want to support them in many ways because of the stain of the reserve list and the complicated and just ethical nature of them i guess but really th this is keeping this alive the only way people have access to legacy to uh, a lot of these other older formats heck even cdh in many ways is because of rental services that allow them to rent the deck try them out try different things because you feel like you're not stuck into a certain deck you can play different things you can play the deck of the week that spike 5 would with you can do a lot of these things with the rental services i mean heck look at vintage i mean look at the tabletop prices come on yeah <sighs> eighty thousand dollars for for prison shops if you go to moto obviously a lot cheaper you know 700 ticks 500 400 uh, again a gold membership on mana traders will allow you to do this but again these formats are only kept up by mana traders if you have them in paper a lot less accessible a lot less people are playing them now eric will say we get this question a lot here Unfortunately, CEDH doesn't work with proxies as the format tends to be overrun by cheating, horrible politics, and lots of preventable drama. Of course, here I am as content creator, capitalizing on that drama for content. Leave a like in the comment down below if you wanna see more stuff like this and bell notification, subscribe, haha. <laughs> but politics 
and cheating rampant everywhere first of all this is for a, a post on reddit from four months ago cheating on spell table talking about how a player you know there, there's situations where they were leading back and out of the camera on spell table a very common way for people to engage and play edh right now across the world if you don't have an lgs or somewhere to go you could be playing digitally with a webcam for very cheap and a lot of people that are out of camera playing away from it and then doing stuff with their hand adding cards and then making plays from there players opening up with nut cards because you aren't able to be there and watch how people shuffle and cut their decks they can set up their plays that way i mean all of this led to the end of the mox masters the big cdh the biggest cdh tournament series mox masters not being discontinued playing with power just announced the ending of their popular tournament series and this was about a couple months ago i think it was two months ago this post was a month ago but i swear it feels like a, a longer than that but a lot of cheating um is what was happening here that got this to be canceled because this was an online series you could access this through formats like spell table and mediums like spell table i should say and so with that cdh just uh, just being inaccessible through cheating politics and drama already at a layer of course proxies won't really work because you're going to have all this nonsense anyway and now with the format not having proxies as a front-facing thing as a front-facing accessible thing for the community why would you just buy into an edh deck even a budget deck you buy into it, you go play some spell table, and then you're, you, people are cheating against you. Why would you even do that? The, even the budget option is inaccessible. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Just go play your power, power level three EDH deck in your pot and have fun. Just go do that. Absolute nonsense. And I mean, here, easily it can. Legacy thrives and event caps. Why would Commander be any different? I, again, Legacy does not thrive. Saffron Olive talks about it here. It doesn't really thrive it's a very has a very dedicated fan base and it prices out too many new players plus tier cdh decks are like two times the price of legacy decks i purposefully did not include any fine research on the tiers of cdh decks as the format gets pushed to the forefront there in my opinion aren't any front facing tier places that anyone could go for cdh for those of involved for those of people that are involved in the scene you could go ask them you go reach out to them they will provide you with resources a lot of the people deep in the scene especially content creators have a lot of great resources for them but if you don't have that as a casual player that goes online and looks up cedh meta there isn't like a central site like magic the guy uh you know mtg goldfish or mtg top eight or whatever it might be that you feel like you can go to and get an extensive list because there isn't an extensive repository of games there are just here and there tournaments. There aren't online leagues, which now there will be, to pull data from about the metagame. What are the best decks? What are the ways to play this format? And nothing is being informed through that information. People don't know if I buy into a deck, will it get banned? Now that it's online, it's going to be a lot more data to see if a deck should be changed, should be affected. And there's going to be a lot more conversation around that come the near future here. And then really, I, th I think this is a great article here, revitalization of like legacy in general. This is a great article talking about how, you know, there's been this like soft cap on it due to high power level of decks, presence of consistent turn one combos, wide use of uh, free disruption and force of will and unmask. And then there's a lot of decks that contribute to this phenomenon and, and like easy wins here, but there's a lot of more accessible decks out there as well. And I'm going to link this article from MTG Wiki down below. I think it's a great read talking about it, you know, this section of innovation through replacement and simplification using different cards from the staples and uh, trying out different angles in the deck that might give you a more accessible way to enter the format that doesn't have some type of complicated combo or just you know five thousand dollar you know sorry five hundred dollar like play set of a card but that's where that drama it really is because ultimately cedh can't work without proxies you need to have accessibility in the format proxies at large for constructed events or um just other events in magic are is, is a whole other topic specifically around high power top of the line tier one tier two cedh decks if you wanted to have bigger tournaments more players entering the scene without proxy friendly tournaments proxies being accepted by and large this format will not be accessible at all and just like online right now rental services are keeping this format alive there is no ifs ands or buts about it rental services are the only reason this format will be able to succeed and if wizards doesn't provide more support for this then even the paper scene won't be able to thrive either for this because people will then want to take these cd each decks build their paper decks and i'm not necessarily asking wizards to be proxy forward 
I can understand how that might be problematic for their selling practices. I don't know what the solution is, but there are smarter, uh, smarter, smarter minds than me in the business sense that can come up with proxy friendly ideas. And especially as a community for a community casual format for a, firm, uh, a community created format, I think we can come up with our own solution that can help benefit the format that a lot of people know and love. A lot of people are now going to get into now that it's getting this front facing um, kind of notoriety. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Is all of this warranted? Can you proxy uh, in CDH and should you proxy? Let me know what your local experience is as a CDH player. As someone who plays a lot of EDH myself, I've been CDH adjacent. I've seen the content. I've absorbed content as well. But I'm not deeply into it because of things like this. I don't know how to actively access the format. I feel a lot of pressure when trying to access this format. I feel a lot of uh, hesitancy because of things like this. I can't play proxies. I can't afford, you know, thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars worth of cards, but I love me a good five, six, seven, whatever power level EDH deck that I can throw my constructed cards into, do something fun and goofy and succeed with. But again, comments down below, sound off. Let me hear it. Let's talk about CEDH.